Hello, I'm Glenn Toby. I'm a Spring Forest Chicago master, and I welcome you to the monthly Heart Wisdom Talks. Today, we're having Terry Lears as a principal share of information. But I welcome you to our overall you know, yearly theme about the art of coming home. Terry's topic for conversation today is on uh, how to come to your heart in a time of stress. So I'd like you to introduce Terry. I've known Terry actually just a, you know, several years, but every time I've had a contact with him or see him do his work, I've always been immensely impressed by his passion and his integrity and his interest in really sharing information in a very helpful, healthful, and everyday language way. So it'll be a quite an enjoyable experience to hear uh, Terry's thoughts as he and I uh, you know, kind of talk with each other and I prod him with certain thoughts or questions. We did have a little uh, conversation a while ago about you know, setting the direction of our talk. But now I'd like to introduce you more formally to Terry. And Terry, welcome to the, this conversation. I'm glad you're here. And I'm wondering if you could you, maybe Paul. share a little bit uh, you know, how you, what your connection with SFQ is. Well, thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Master Glenn. I'm so privileged to be here to speak with you and have a conversation with the Spring Forest Qigong community. And uh, it, it's an honor. And uh, you asked how I became involved with Spring Forest Qigong. Well, like many people, I had a, uh, a health condition that uh, Western medicine was not able to uh, find the uh, the root cause, and uh, I had the opportunity to start exploring other alternative complementary medicines. And uh, a friend had introduced me to the concept of qigong. I could barely even say the word. I'd seen it published, but I had never really become aware of it until uh, a friend had told me about it and I immediately ran off, uh, got my laptop and I started uh, researching what this thing was. What, what's this thing Qigong? What's it mean? And, uh, and I started to continue my search and that's when I found Master Lin. And that was back in 2014. And at the time, I was uh, going through life changes like we all do. Uh, and I discovered that uh, part of my original health condition was the result of not looking at the whole package, not looking at the mind, body, spirit, as uh, is what's done in traditional Chinese medicine. They look at the whole mind, body, spirit. And uh, I immediately, once I found Master Lin, I ordered some DVDs and I started practicing and I, I found, wow, there's something to this. And that's when I uh, set aside any belief that might have been holding me back. And I started with a beginner's mind. I, I, I said, there's a lot of things I have to unlearn if I'm really going to pull a thread on chi gung, working with the, the energy, the life force, spirit. And uh, so the rest is history. I immediately signed up for a uh, first level class. I had uh, uh, Master Jackie Gran. I had uh, Master Gadu as my first instructors in California. And I was just blown away. And I just continued to uh, explore and research the uh, the healing power of spring force to come. Terry, so that's how I got Terry, you say that, involved. Yeah, you say that you've had other modalities that you looked at. What uh, kind of keeps you connected to the influence of spring force Chicago after all these years? Well, I, anyone who's met Master Lin, Grandmaster Lin knows that he comes from 
a place of unconditional love. And his mission, his vision for the world, a healer in every home and uh, a world without pain. That resonated with me. That was something I could get behind. And that's something I could say, wow, this is something uh, I want to tell everybody about. And of course, I get pretty excited sometimes when I come across something that's uh, uh, pretty powerful, like Qigong in Spring Forest Qigong. So uh, I have to say, uh, it was Master Lin, Master Lin, and of course, the, everybody back at the, the home office there in the Spring Forest Qigong in Eden Prairie. So uh, uh, I got certified as a trainer. I got uh, certified as a practice group leader. I was recognized as a uh, trainer of the year for uh, Spring Forest Qigong Level 1 uh, for self-healing. And, and that just continued to uh, snowball. And I uh, really appreciate that. So how has uh, Spring Forest Qigong kind of made an impact on your way of life? You know, like your topic for today, a little bit is about uh, you know, coming home to your heart in times of stress. Like, how has it uh, affected the stress that well, you've experienced in your life? Well, and we have to well, be done in four days. Would, <laughs> well, uh, it, it would not be... Uh, an overstatement to say that we've all been under a lot of stress over this past year, lots of stress. And uh, whether you're uh, suffering from uh, health conditions or you're uh, in seclusion or you're not able to socialize, uh, the amount of stress that we're all living with is uh, something that uh, has to be uh, recognized. As you know, 80 to 90 percent of all doctor visits are the result of dis-ease or stress. And that was exactly my health condition 20 years ago. And uh, I didn't realize it, nor did my Western doctors realize that the, the root cause of my stress was imbalance in my emotions, my work life balance, my exercise routine. and uh, and that was the cause. That was truly the root cause. And so finding peace in a simple thing as saying the password. I am in the password. I am in the universe. The universe is in me. The universe and I are one. That's, that gives me an anchor. That gives me an anchor. If I'm walking down the street and I uh, see someone maybe litter or, or I'm on the, the freeway and I uh, get cut off, I see that as an opportunity to say, oh, yes, I am in the universe. The universe is in me. The universe and I are one. And then I realize, oh, that person is in the universe. The universe is in them. And he and the universe are one. So that makes me one with all other life forms, all other people. So I... Uh, practice the just the simple reminder that we're all connected and we all come from a uh, a place of unconditional love and uh, I found that uh, spring forest qigong and qigong in general has been a blessing it's been a blessing so I, I hear you uh, hinting at this kind of way of life <laughs> that uh, practicing the qigong isn't like going down to the gym I'm going to work out for uh, half an hour, an hour, oh. and then I'm going to go home and have my life. <laughs> you have this focus a little bit on that Chicago is kind of a every day, every moment kind of experience in life. It, 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 exactly. And, and this is uh, relevant to the word vigil. In the old times, they would keep a vigil waiting for the ship captains to return to the harbor and people would be waiting uh, 24 seven. But in this case, uh, the word vigil means to be in a, a constant state of awareness, awakeness. And to be vigilant is to be uh, 
awake and removed from sleepiness. So this is my my little practice that I I always try and remember my remind myself to go back to that place of unconditional love and uh, and uh, and know that I'm a love radiator. In fact, I, I think uh, I, I'm going to take Master Lin's example of smile, start my internal love engine, and I'm going to suggest uh, that we're really we're love factories. And I came from the corporate world. I came from the left brain world. I came from uh, large organizations where we had a, a CEO, we had vice presidents, we had marketing, uh, we had manufacturing, and we had uh, inventory. So I like to think of uh, we are all love factories designed to take in love and send out love. So I'm the CEO, you're the CEO of your own little love factory. And all we do is we just spread love. And so you think about the, uh, what kind of employees would you like to have when you're uh, running your own company, whether it's big or small, you wanna have happy employees. You wanna have happy cells and uh, you wanna have happy organs, happy uh, muscles filled with love, peace, contentment. And, uh, and so you get to a state of where that's all you want to be around. That's what you want to embrace. And that's what you want to share with people. You want to share this loving uh, expression of uh, the universe, uh, the oneness, the source. So uh, could, could you speak more know, about how that... Point. Well, maybe just continue, like, you know, like stress is so powerful. I might be saying, yeah, you can say just love, just have be a love factory. But however, you know, I'm not feeling the love. I'm not feeling the, the joy. I'm just feeling, feeling you know, okay. this kind of irritation and frustration. Okay. What are you talking about, Gary? <laughs> well, yeah, I, uh, simple things like just acts of kindness, acts yeah. of kindness, uh, whether you receive them or, or just a just a smile. Even though we you might be in a situation where you're wearing a mask, you can still smile while you're wearing that mask. And a smile uh, actually helps to release endorphins, uh, love and, and uh, feeling love changes the chemistry of the body. That's been proven. And when you feel the love and the peace, you get into that parasymp parasympathetic nervous state. You're not in the, in the reaction, the fight and flight mode that is so destructive to our uh, ability to just be vital and, and creative and, and, and loving and just expressing who we really are. So uh, it's not for everybody. But, uh, and it takes time too. Uh, I'll give you an example where uh, a couple of years ago, I, I hiked the Camino Santiago and that's the pilgrimage path to the cathedral in uh, de Compostelo, Spain, where the remains of uh, St. James the Great are. And there's nine major paths and there's two that are popular. And pilgrims from all over the world for generations have been going to the site, either as a vision quest, a spiritual quest, or just as a, uh, a regular pilgrimage. But all the paths that exist are unique to the individuals that take them. And so what I'm expressing is that there are many ways to get back home. There's many ways for us to return to our heart. And we're all on this journey together and we all start where we, where we start. And we all are starting at different places. And the Spring Forest Qigong, thankfully, was that anchor and that uh, North Star that alerted me to all the major possibilities out there of uh, uh, being a love radiator. And uh, I think I told you in the, uh, in the preview, talk that uh, my first love radiator was my mom. When you think about this, uh, bringing new life 
into this world takes love and courage. And uh, bless my mom. She passed away uh, uh, three years ago. But she had unconditional love. When I think back on all the times growing up, mom was an unconditional love radiator. Never was judgmental, never was, well, conditional. She was, she saw everybody as equal. And, and I, I had a good teacher in that, that uh, she was a, a love radiator, unconditional. Now, growing up and, and being married and being uh, uh, working in corporate, I tended to forget that. And I got in the world of uh, this everyday things happening there where uh, y you forget that it's all about love. It's, it's how we take care of each other. And, uh, and so to, to close out, uh, I think I told you also that uh, there was an instance where I was at the uh, Master Chief Conference years ago, and I got the phone call that my mother was passing. And, uh, and I, I said, well, I'll, I'll just hang out with the Master Chi Conference because we're going to do the uh, Lotus Blessing. And there's two, 300 of these beautiful people there, these love radiators. And I continued to experience the love and said a prayer for my mom. Upon my return, uh, my mom had waited for me before, before she transitioned. And at the moment of transition, there was this energy emanating out from my mom as she was passing. And I remember my sister saying, what is that? What is that feeling? What is that? What's going on? And I said, that's, a, that's love. We are getting a peek at just a small glimpse of what total, unconditional, universal, infinite love is like. So my mom was my first exposure to unconditional love, and she was my uh, uh, last exposure to pure, unconditional love. And uh, I told this story to Master Lin, and he said, yes, that's what you were experiencing. You were experiencing the unconditional love that exists there. It's such a beautiful story, Terry. And and as you speak it, oh. you know, this idea of a radiator. So if your mom was a love radiator, what is what is she doing? She yeah. radiates. She's not convincing. She's not lecturing. <laughs> she's not forcing. It just radiates. It's the radiation of her love that affects people around her or out further. It, you nailed it on the, on the head there, uh, Glenn. People can tell by your presence. You don't have to say a word. You're attracted to people that come from love, that come from the heart, that are non-judgmental. They're not separate. They're, uh, they see themselves in you. They see the divine in you, the same divine that is in them and they see how everything's connected and how we're all here to help each other. We're really here to help each other there. So um, that's what I appreciate about the Spring Force Qigong is the emphasis on unconditional love and connecting with the universe through the password and then radiating love. This love is not meant to be squandered. It's not meant to be to this one individual, it's meant to be shared. And by doing that, we uh, ultimately raise the level of unconditional love. In fact, I, I am, I'm going to suggest that there's a new type of global warming going on. You know what that is? It's, it's all the warmth of us being global love radiators. We're, we're changing how we live. We're changing our communities. We're changing our spouses. Uh, our pets love it. 
nature loves it. They just love that we are remembering who we are. We're returning back home to that infinite amount of harmony that uh, Master Lin talks about. And when he talks about the, the Tao and yin and yang, and there is no bad energy, no good energy. There's just an imbalance. And, and so through uh, practicing Qigong, Spring Forest Qigong and the uh, five element exercise that we're able to restore that balance. If I had known about Spring Forest Qigong 20 years ago, oh, my life would be different. But it's different <laughs> now in a yeah, whole different yeah. way. <laughs> you, know, you, you mentioned, you mentioned earlier way. about the smile, start my internal love engine. So, you know, I've heard from Master Lin too talk about the, you know, the the pressure points, the active points on your tongue and on your lips. So the smile it really activates that that inside. So the smile isn't so much about you know me smiling to other people, smile to other people. No, it really is activating the heart by smiling. So the mask on, oh they can't see my smile. Almost I don't care. The smile kind of isn't for you. The smile is for for me to remind me to activate my heart so that wherever I walk and talk, you know, I, I have that radiating love from me. And a smile so, doesn't cost anything. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. I love that. Yeah. So you say you come from the corporate world, you know, kind of describing it much more of a kind of a brain function, an intellectual function, a outcome indicator, mm. you know, measurement kind of stuff. So what is the understanding for you of moving from your head? You know, Maslin will say 18 inches, moving from your head you know, <laughs> down to your heart. Well, well that's, that's a great question because uh, it takes a lot of unlearning. It takes a lot of remembering as we learn about the dantian we learn about the the power uh, the the energy that's contained within the heart we have so many neurons intelligent neurons within our heart and sometimes we have to leave the the mental side we have to quiet that and trust our heart, trust our gut, if you will, because that's where our intelligence truly lies. And so uh, that's where I, uh, I encourage people to, as they do uh, their daily exercises of maybe working out Pilates or go to the gym or, or things like that. Um, I like to do heart exercises. I, I like to exercise my heart muscle, if you will, there. It's the most important muscle. It's the most important organ in our life. So if I'm walking down the street or I'm in my car, I send love, I send blessings, I send kindness to others. And I send it also to myself because um, growing up in the, uh, the, uh, the corporate uh, win-lose competition where everything is uh, dissected and hierarchical and uh, uh, separate. When you come from the heart, when you start to think that we're all connected, that my actions impact others, that it makes you more aware to come from a loving place. and. Uh, so this is one of my uh, learning edges. As I go through life and I practice my Qigong and I have uh, interactions, I, I remember, am I coming from a place of love? And uh, so that's, that's, that's my message. I, I also like to do something that I call OM. We've all heard the mantra OM, but I just like to uh, allow that to stand for open heart meditation. So I'm walking down the street or if I'm having a conversation, I can see someone's having a rough day. 
I open my heart to them and I silently give them the peace, the compassion, the joy that perhaps is not there right now. I, I, I give them a blessing. I thank them. They don't have to know, but I just, I send that unconditional love and light that we all have access to. I, I send it to them. There. So that's a form of radiation, isn't it? You know, when you send that love out, you're radiating. You're not, you're not grabbing them by the shoulder and shaking them and saying, "Have a good day, have a good day." You know. Well, well, you're absolutely right because uh, our words, our thoughts, our uh, emotions, uh, everything is energy, and so if you Remember what Master Lin says, you know, there are three types of energy. There's the, the first level where it's, you know, the power, the energy, the electricity, and then second level is the consciousness level. And then the third level is the intelligence. So Spring Forest Qigong is all about signal healing, message healing, uh, communication. So sending a loving message through your mind is still a healing message, whether they know it or not. So we, we can always radiate love uh, 24 seven, even when we're, uh, so you, even when we're asleep. <laughs> so you're, again, you're talking about this everyday thing, you know, like the driver cutting you off. At that moment, you're, you might think a, a phrase or a word. So you really have a choice what vibration do I want to choose? I could say, how come you cut me off? Or I could say, I love you, sir. Or ma'am. So every well, moment you that's have. That's exactly it. And that, every moment, every waking moment is that opportunity to uh, make a choice. And so if someone cuts you off, you can, you could, uh, say something from an angry place, or you could say, oh, yes, I'm a love radiator. I'm going to say, thank you. I bless you. I forgive you. And I send you love. I send you love. And I say, thank you for reminding me of what I am truly all about, why I came down on the planet. So whether it's a, a argument or you see someone litter or they cut you off or you you have a tense moment with uh, a spouse, that's the opportunity to become vigilant, become awake yes. and aware of how you're coming, how you're becoming, how you're being in that moment there, rather than get caught up in, you know, uh, triggers and getting caught in the fight or flight or the ego, letting the ego, because the ego is very powerful. And uh, the heart is the best way to suppress uh, the, the ego and anything that might get generated from uh, acting from a, a place of ego and separation. There. So in a way, then you're kind of hinting again, you know, at it's not going, let's not doing the 30 minutes or the half hour of the exercise and you're, you're done. Is that this is a practice you can be oh. practicing. You know, day in, day out. Oh, I could have thought differently. I could have loved a little in a different way. Oh, I'll keep on practicing on how to come to my heart, how to come home more and more easily, more and more quickly. Oh, I got frustrated really. Oh, I just mad about, oh, I know how to what? Come back earlier. Come home to my heart sooner, faster. Come, come home. It's a practice. Yes. Y yes. And, uh, Sometimes I'm better than others, yeah. but I always uh, think that I'm coming from a place of love. And then, and then I, I might find those times where I go, oh, wow, what just happened? You know, and I go, wow, I, I forgive myself. I, I have compassion for myself. As we know, to heal, you need to come from a place of compassion. 
and forgiveness and kindness and self-love. Not only when you're healing others, but you, you do that for yourself. It's, it's the old uh, pre-flight, pre-flight, or pre-flight, pre-takeoff announcement that the flight attendant says for safety. In the case of an emergency, put on your own oxygen mask before you try and put it on someone else. So this is really about self-care and being self-aware. It's not about beating yourself up. So I know a lot of people probably don't have the opportunity to go out in nature. or They might not have an opportunity to socialize in person with social distancing. But uh, just having a moment, a quiet moment to listen to your heart will easily get you out of your head as you listen to your heart. You listen to that sweet voice that is so yummy. <laughs> and it's uh, that, that, that feeling of wow. And uh, so how, how has that thing. Kind of changed your life, thing, you know? What were you like before, oh, wow. and what do you know? <laughs> oh, boy. Ten, ten, that, ten words or less. <laughs> well, if if I met that person today, he probably wouldn't be in my tribe. Yeah. You know, he, he's a nice guy. He's successful. He's seems like a, a dedicated family man, uh, hardworking. Uh, but uh, he's he's waiting for that uh, wake up moment, which luckily I had in the uh, form of uh, distress and something that uh, uh, allowed me to look look deeper, look deeper in uh, into myself, and uh, so luckily I did there so when master lynn talks yeah. about um you know a, a world without pain and suffering you know where are you at with that kind of uh vision oh i think that's a perfect vision I, I i i love that because I see myself as having what I'll call a moral imperative where I need to step up and align with my life purpose and align with what I'm really all about and help myself heal and help others heal and help the world heal, whether it's through words, actions, uh, sending blessings to people, uh, continuing my education, uh, training people, meeting people where they are, because uh, not everybody is uh, fortunate, or maybe they're not ready, but uh, just to be uh, a role model. That's what I that's what I envision for myself as a uh, be a healer in my own home and to be see a world without pain any kind of pain there so i, I you hint out this idea of you, you have a greater consciousness about the way to come home to your heart rather than unnecessarily listen to what the brain thinks about what you should do oh that your access yes. to your heart is more easily done it is, yeah. And I had the opportunity to uh, access uh, head-to-heart meditations a couple of years ago, and I used those to remind myself to, to travel that short distance between the head and the heart. And uh, so I'm a recovering engineer, a computer scientist, <laughs> and... Uh, uh, 
uh, and so, but uh, that served me well, and it also served me well to understand s some of the the true science that's just being uh, shown and released. The, the true science behind the traditional Chinese medicine and all the wisdom that exist in spring forest qigong that it is real it's as real as anything if not more real than uh some of the things that we think are real so that's why yeah. uh, having a grade of consciousness is is really important yeah so, so in a couple of minutes if the topic of this series is heart wisdom talk What's your perspective on what heart wisdom is? Oh, wow. Heart wisdom. We all have this heart, this beautiful heart that sometimes we overlook, but this beautiful heart knows immediately from the time of when we're in our, our, our mother's womb, it knows to start beating in a regular beat. It's intelligence, it's connected to love. And so heart wisdom is tapping into that, that, that capacity, that infinite capacity that resides in the heart. So trusting the heart Trusting that natural intelligence, that uh, infinite intelligence that is our, that's our direct line to the universe. For me, that, that's our, that's our, uh, that's our ability to return home to uh, who we really are and kind of escape some of the noise that gets created uh, through the ego or through the mind, you know, getting out of the mind and, and going to that quietness and listening to the heart, the wisdom, the uh, infinite, uh, uh, that intuition, trusting that intuition there. So, so with that question in mind about trusting the heart and the intuition, where do you see yourself going in the, as time moves on? Well, time moves on. Well, I'm continuing the journey. That the journey never ends, and uh, so uh, uh, continue to be involved with uh, Master Lin, the Grand Master Lin, and you. You know, we've got uh, the Master Chi Conference coming up this weekend, which is a powerful event to uh, spread the love and introduce the, the powerful teachings of Spring Forest Qigong and Qigong in general and unconditional love. Uh, I continue to explore other uh, modalities that uh, complement uh, the expression of unconditional love that help you amp amplify and accelerate uh, getting in touch with the life force there and then sharing it with people through training and, and classes and and, uh, and just being with uh, love radiators like you and everybody who's viewing this right now there. So that's where I see myself all the way to the end. Thank you so much, Terry. You know, the topic has, has been this idea of how to come from the heart in the time of stress and, and your thoughtfulness and your thoughts and your, your heart language really was a, a a beautiful connection so thank you so much for your time well and would you like well, to uh, lead us in, in a meditation sure absolutely that would be a wonderful uh, so just ask that people sit with their shoulders softly gently back feet on the ground you can close your eyes, and breathing in through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Just close your eyes, 
Feel the presence, the presence of your masters. And place a smile on your, your face and feel that smile in your heart. Feel that unconditional love expanding in your heart as we start my internal love engine. And focus on that area deep behind your navel, your dantian, just glowing, illuminated with loving light, light greater than a trillion suns, just illuminating, shining all throughout your body. And feel your guides, your loved ones. We say the password, I am in the universe, universe is in me, universe and I are one. And feel that presence of unconditional love and light just glowing so bright, just shining, extending all throughout your torso, moving through your shoulders, your neck, your head, your arms, your hands, your abdomen, your legs, your feet. You are glowing, shining, being filled with unconditional love from the universe. And you give thanks to all the masters, all the saints that have come before, that have shared their wisdom to bring this knowledge to us. We're so grateful. So we are filled with love, just breathing in love, this healing love this healing joy, this unconditional joy, this happiness, and feel this tender, loving light find its way up into your heart, flowing all throughout your heart, every cell, every molecule, just radiating freely, Just feel the emotions of love in your heart, radiating. And breathe in joy and feel that joy in your heart. Feel that happiness entering, encompassing your whole body. Feel the emotion of peace, loving peace, and contentment. You're so content, surrounded by everyone that loves you unconditionally, supporting you in this moment. Happy to have you return home. They're just smiling, sharing their love. And you're so happy with this beautiful light and love in your heart. And just feel it glowing, shining, radiating out. As you send this love out to the room you're in, Send this beautiful love out to your neighborhood. Just radiate it. Radiate out this love to your town. See the town just glowing, and illuminated with this brilliant, beautiful, loving light. And your province or your state radiate out your neighborhood, your state, your province. 
and let this loving light shine all throughout your country, all over your continent. Makes you feel so wonderful. And send this loving light out to the world, everyone on the planet, all of nature, all the fish, all the trees, all life is feeling your love, feeling that connection to the universe, expanding, radiating, unconditionally bringing joy, bringing peace, bringing happiness. As we share our love with the world. Just feel your connection, loving light, expanding everywhere. healing the world. So now, bring your attention back down to your Dantian. See that loving light, that beautiful ball of energy just shining brightly. And see it spin, spinning gently, smoothly, now faster getting smaller, size of a tennis ball, golf ball, marble, now a pearl, getting faster and brighter and brighter. Just slip that energy ball back deep behind the navel. And as we bring ourselves back to the room, we take three gentle breaths, Rub your palms together and massage your face, shape of a heart. Hmm. Just, just live in this blessing, live in this love. Be this eternal love radio. And give thanks that you've taken the time to return home to be with your heart again. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Bless you. Thank you, Terry. And good night, uh, everyone. Always remember yeah. that you're alive. Yeah, love radiators.